We start by leaving a medium sized tail. It should be about 30 centimeters, 12 inches long. And then we cast on three stitches. I prefer to use the slingshot version of the long tail cast on because it doesn't leave a rigid slip knot. But you can use any basic cast on method that you like. So cast on three stitches. That would be the beginning of the I cord. The next steps would be exactly the same like the steps we do with the usual I cord cast on. So we turn the work and then we take the empty needle in our right hand and I use circular needles because I'm going to use the same needle to join the cast on in the round later on. But you can use whatever uh, setup you like, double pointed needles, two circulars, whatever you like. And then we make a reverse yarn over like this and knit three stitches of the uh, eye cord. One, two, three. And the last step would be to slip the stitches of the eye cord purlwise from the right needle to the left needle, like this. And then we repeat these steps over and over again, reverse yarn over, knit the stitches of the eye cord. It could be three stitches or four or five, depending on how wide the eye cord is, but I find that three stitches gives a nice neat look, so I will do it with three stitches in this tutorial. And then we repeat this until we have the number of stitches that we need for the project on the right needle and the stitches of the eye cord sitting on the left needle. And this is the last stitch that I'm casting on. So I slip three stitches back so that I could uh, clearly see the stitches that I cast on. So I need 20 stitches and I have two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's 20 stitches over here and three stitches of the eye cord on the other needle. Actually, we can uh, skip the step of slipping stitches back and forth because the next step would be to slip the stitches of the eye cord back to the right needle. But we did th this step just to make it less confusing for ourselves so we can separate the stitches and count the stitches properly. Now that we know we have all stitches that we need and we have the stitches of the eye cord on the, um, on the right needle, it is time to arrange stitches for working in the round. I'm going to use the magic loop method, but any setup works. Uh, whatever you prefer, go with it. Uh, when you divide stitches, for example, for the magic loop, I'm going to divide my stitches into two groups, right? Into two halves of stitches. So when you divide stitches, keep in mind that you are dividing the stitches of the cast on itself. And then you kind of attach these stitches of the eye cord to the last group of stitches because we're going to get rid of these stitches pretty soon. And the stitches or that you cast on will stay in the proper position. So I'm going to count 10 stitches to two, four, six, eight, ten, and then pull the eye cord, um, pull the, the cord of the needle from there, the magic loop. And the, the, the other group of stitches, that is 10 stitches, 10 remaining stitches that I cast on plus the three stitches of the, of the eye cord, it stays on the other needle. And we keep it close to the tip of the needle because we're going to slip these stitches from the needle right now when we start seaming these stitches together. So here comes the tricky part. So how do we join all these stitches in a, a seamless circle? And that's what this tutorial is all about. So we'll use this tail that we left at the cast on edge. You see, I, I attached the yarn in a contrasting color to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Uh, but of course, you would have yarn in the same color as the project. And that's exactly the reason why we left the tail a bit longer uh, than the usual short tail that we leave, because that's the tail that we're going to use for stitching. So we, um, we thread this tail into a wool needle and then we start seaming. So arrange the stitches like this, so that the stitches uh, that stay on the needle the, with the eye cord over here, they stay at the right, and the other end of the, um, of the castle edge stays at the left side. And the stitches are not twisted, and actually with the eye cord cast on, it's one of its uh, benefits. It is very easy to say whether the uh, cast on edge is twisted or not. So this one is clearly not twisted and make sure yours is not twisted as well because this is very important. The first step is to insert the wool needle with the tail in it, of course, from back to front into the first stitch on the knitting needle, the right needle. 
we go like this from back to front and this is the left stitch of the eye cord so there are three stitches over here so this is the left one of them so we go in there then we slip this stitch off the knitting needle and pull the yarn through because this stitch is the one that is attached to the working yarn the uh, it could get a bit loose so if that's the case just pull it a little bit and it is also a good idea to keep the working yarn uh, at the right side so it doesn't get in the way as we do the seaming so once we pull the yarn through we pull it just enough to leave a strand that is about as long as one leg of an average stitch of the eye cord and that is true for all sorts of uh, seams that are uh, based on grafting so we leave we don't pull it too tight we leave a strand that is about as long as one leg of an average stitch of the uh, of the cast on edge of the eye cord and then we insert the wool needle from right to left under both legs of the first stitch that we cast on and this stitch would be right over here at the right side of the eye cord because the eye cord we didn't pull it yet so it's kind of flat-ish right so you can see that the stitches are over here and the eye cord we can kind of flatten it and that's very useful because that will help us uh, find this stitch and this stitch is over here and because the eye cord is now upside down this side of the eye cord is upside down this stitch will look like an inverted v not like a regular v but an inverted v so we go under both legs of that stitch and pull the yarn through but again not all the way through we kind of form this stitch so these two strands should be about as big as one stitch of the of the eye cord the next step would be to go with the same wool needle front to back into the stitch that we've just slipped and then back to front into the next stitch of the eye cord which would be the first stitch from the tip of the knitting needle then we slip the stitch off and pull the yarn through making a nice strand over here then we go under both legs of the next stitch of the cast on edge which would be right over here and pull the yarn through forming a nice strand see this stitch is kind of you can already tell that this chain of stitches is kind of continuous if the yarn is in the same color it would be exactly the same as the rest of the stitches and then we do it one more time in my case because I'm working on the three stitch I cord so we go front to back into the slip stitch and back to front into the last stitch of the eye cord I slip it off the knitting needle pull the yarn through shape a nice stitch over here and then go under the last stitch of the eye cord uh, cast on the first row of the eye cord just like this see we already have a nice a seam that again if the yarn is in the same color will be really blending in with the fabric the last step would be to insert the wool needle front to back into the last stitch of the uh, of the um, eye cord the, of the last row of the eye cord and back to front that would be like this into the first stitch the one that is attached to the working yarn so we go on and join these two stitches just like this and that's it so we secure the yarn and then hide the tail inside the eye cord so you can do it uh, by making a simple simple uh, loop over here go through the loop if the yarn is thick like mine and you don't want to have that knot over, it, over there you can skip this step but only if the yarn is not slippery if it is slippery it is better to make a knot and be sure that the uh, the seam does not unravel when you start wearing your beautiful hat top down sweater um, cowl or whatever it is and then we hide the tail inside the eye cord and no one will ever see where the seam happened of course again if the yarn isn't the same color so cut the tail and then spread the 
uh, pull the eye cord so that the stitch is spread and the tail is hidden there forever. Let's take a look at what we have now. Now we have a beautiful cast on edge that is completely seamless because no one will ever know where the seam is. As you work a few rows, you will, you will see a nice edge, but because this seam is so uh, invisible, it will be hard to tell where the beginning of the round is. So it is very important right now, before you started working the first row, to insert the marker so that you know where the beginning of the round is, because it could be quite a challenge later on to find the spot where you've just made the seam adjoin the, uh, the I cord cast on in the round. And then simply work the stitches as, you, uh, as your pattern tells you to work them, knit them or purl them or whatever else a stitch pattern you're gonna use, work them as usual through the front loop and because we cast on stitches using the reverse yarn over see they are positioned on the needle in a funky way right when we work them through the front loop i'm going to show you how how they will look so when we work them through the front loop like this what happens is we twist the stitch so once we knit it for example or purl it and I really just want to show you how the stitch looks. That's why I'm not pulling it to the other end of the uh, knitting needle. See, once we knit it, the stitch twists. And that's a great bonus for several reasons. First, the stitches will never be too long. That's what usually happens with the eye cord cast on. And second, they create those twisted stitches. They kind of prop the eye cord, making this cast on edge even more vivid and more nice. And that's how it looks when you work a few rows. See, it's kind of sticking out. It's kind of embossed, which is beautiful and gives a really nice look to the whole project. Like, look, all those little details, you know, they matter. And I have this stitch marker over here because as you see, the edge is so seamless that it is really hard to tell where the eye cord was joined in the round. That's why I have this marker. And it also serves another purpose because I use the eye cord bind off, which creates an absolutely identical edge on the other uh, side of the fabric. Because of that, this marker does not only show me the, uh, the beginning of the round, but it also shows me where the cast on is. Because otherwise, it would be hard to tell which of these edges is a cast on edge or a bind off edge. To get more details about this method, go to tenroseday.com slash iCord cast on round. And if you want to learn how to make the iCord bind off that creates an absolutely matching edge, then go to tenroseday.com slash icord dash bind off. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.